Well, I found a chair and uh, we're in our main studio. Uh, my desk is all over the place, I see. It's, it's just chaos. It's just Hey, Matt. You can, if you go through that way, it probably might be easier. Yeah. Okay. Who, who was that? <laughs> that was the gentleman with the insurance company. He's got to come through and th there's all of our electronics throughout the building. They were setting in humidity levels at, you know, the 90% range and heat of 95 degrees and running in that temperature. You saw the TV rack and stuff. And so the, the process that the insurance has to go through is for for, for every single piece of equipment, and you know how much equipment was in yeah. the different rooms and stuff, they have to basically take apart and open up every piece of equipment, look for damage within each piece of equipment first, and then they have to go through a second stage of plugging each piece of equipment in and, and trying to do some tests with input, output, and and verify before anything is, is uh, repaired or replaced. But the big concern is is the loss of life side of things. As you know, I mean, the, the studio is right now home to everything in our office. I mean, we had to move everything from that side over to this side. And the reason why we had to do that is because um, the, the policy side of things to try and move that stuff off site um, was just out of, out of the question from the policy side of things. So, so it's stored here and uh, we're needing to go through and inventory every piece of equipment right down to every cable, the length of the cable, the type of cable. Um, what, you know, they've got put in water and stuff and, you know, soaked up, wicked up all the water. And um, I mean, significant, significant amounts of damage. And then all the electronics have been pulled out from everything and stacked on all the tables so that we could go through, like I said, one piece at a time, taking it apart, searching for um, you know the ones that were most damaged some things were actually plugged in and running in the water and so you can see some uh, you can see some surge protectors that are just fried completely um, and the stuff that's plugged into that obviously is you know yes yeah, questionable everything yeah I mean it's just There's a just problem no way of knowing yeah what the future holds for everything that we've built here yeah uh, yeah I was uh, I was in Washington DC uh, with the National Religious Broadcasters uh, serving on the TV committee and we were in the middle of meetings with uh, the president of NRB and uh, Caleb uh, Caleb called in to talk to me and I couldn't take the call and I regret not having been able to take Caleb's call because he was calling to tell me the building was flooded. And uh, I guess I'm glad I didn't have to hear that news in the middle of all those kind of high-level meetings with leaders of the broadcast world because I think I would have been distracted from the purposes that I was supposed to serve there. But I walked out of the meetings, we left D.C., and I called Caleb and he told me, what had happened and uh, we're still kind of reeling from this I don't know what to do <clears throat> and it would be disingenuous to uh, to not admit that I wondered if uh, you know this was a hint from God that I'm supposed to quit that perhaps I've uh, served out my useful life I don't know <laughs> I've been in ministry f since 1973 and it was really extremely disheartening to come back from Washington, D.C. and walk into this and see this and hear noises that I don't know what's going to happen around this place. <laughs> the point is that I really did have to ask the Lord, are you, you trying to give me a sign that I'm done? And, and I remember sitting back at this table just a couple of days ago with Josh and Caleb and telling them that I, I don't know that I could start over again. It's been a long, hard pull to get to this place, to get to this platform, to have the level of uh, functionality and capability to be able to do what 
we've sacrificed and learned and, and worked so hard to be able to do. And I got to tell you, I don't want to start over. I don't. I have strength and I know that God loves the lost in this fallen world and still desires to have the message of his love declared, not just by me, not just by my children, not just by my grandchildren, but by all who have come to the saving knowledge of the love of God. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen around here. You know, I, I thank God that we've been able to make our payments on the insurance. We have some insurance and it's going to help some. We have no idea what the result will be. We're in the middle of important things. There's important things being done. Josh kind of drug us into a work in Cuba years ago. And I can't say I was totally on board because I spent years working with the underground church in communist countries back in the 70s and 80s. And, and the Cuban people have embraced our Today with God project. And there's incredible things going on in that communist nation. And, and uh, it's, we've had an opportunity to become part of something really important in our Today with God project and the Cuban Spanish undertaking by the Cuban people, so dramatic. It would be so tragic to be shut down now, to be stopped by water. I'm supposed to try and connect the dots here in some way. It's just a, it's just a trial, it's just a test. And we're gonna learn from this that we can trust God because God's going to help us overcome and He's going to, through the prayers of people who care about the gospel going forward, God is going to help us. And I want to just read you one, one little section from the Hebrew prophet Isaiah. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor therefore. His arm brought forth salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries. We have adversaries. You have adversaries. Are we going to let the adversaries win the day? And the answer has to be no. He's going to recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And this is the verse I want to focus on because I like to call this the missing comma text. There's a missing comma in this text in the King James Version as far as I'm concerned. It says, when the enemy, and this is how you read it, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, comma, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. But I'd rather read it differently. I'd rather add a comma where it belongs. When the enemy shall come in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And I would just like to declare that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, he will come in like a flood. He will come in like a flood and raise up a standard against our enemy. Join with us and pray for us and help us if you're able. And I ask that in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Shalom. Please come back to Cross Talk again when you get a chance and hopefully we'll be here. <laughs> You've seen and heard many things and some of you may be touched to want to help us. Some of you may just want to drop me a line to say hello or to let me know what you're thinking. My name is Randy Weiss. Maybe we could be friends on Facebook. It's just simple. It's Randy Weiss and the number one. You can give us a call toll-free anytime. The number is 1-800-688-3422. 
I'll repeat that, 1-800-688-3422. And if you want to write to us, just send your letters to Crosstalk, P.O. Box 2528, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106, USA. Your tax-deductible donations are deeply needed and greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Till next time, shalom and God bless you.